Special thanks to Stumbling Tours super sponsors Schumann 3D Blast, Shine Wolf, Ministry of Ennui Control, Metric Conversion, Rune Fox, Thingy, Lemon314, and Lord Entropy. Visit David X Newton on Patreon to join the ASCII Brigade. Your greatest obstacle to doing whatever you please in Transport Tycoon, apart from money and navigating through the labyrinths of insane track layouts left by the competing AI players, is the critical eye of the town's local authorities. They're the ones who are presumably granting the permits for you to build in and around their towns. This usually happens silently with no problems, but if you overreach they will stop you from doing anything that they're unhappy with. Many construction actions that take place within the jurisdiction of a local authority will at least subtly affect their opinion of you. Their attitude will improve the more you help their town, and they will get increasingly annoyed with you the more you alter their roads and dynamite their historic buildings. Every town stores its own opinion of each transport company in the game, which can be found on the local authority window accessible from the town view. Internally, this rating is stored as a number from 1000 down to negative 1000, but the player can only see a summary that describes which band they're in. With a rating of 1 to 200, a company will be declared mediocre. From then on, every 200 more points will change their opinion of you to good, then very good, excellent, and finally outstanding. If you've annoyed a town council, they'll quickly let you know about it, as dropping to 0 points or below will change your rating to poor. Beyond that, from negative 200 to 399, it'll change to very poor, and anything below that will appear as appalling. For some reason, if you're playing in US English, this will be listed as atrocious instead, but all the other rating names remain the same. The lower your rating is, the less likely it is that the town will allow you to perform further construction there. I wanted to find out how exactly the player's actions affect the opinion of the local authorities, and when the restrictions start to come in. For this video, as well as looking at the game's code, I'll be referring to the very helpful game mechanics page on the OpenTDT wiki, mostly written a decade ago by Dogman. This is an excellent guide to some of the more hidden aspects of the game, and the wiki also includes some details on hotkeys and other things that you might not know about. To aid in demonstration, during my destructive rampage throughout the rest of this video I'll be using a version of OpenTDD that I've tampered with, where I've added a display of the reputation loss or gain of an action, along with its cost. I've also modified it so that I can see the exact reputation score that each town has given me, instead of just the general band. Each town begins the game thinking every transport company is very good, with a rating of 500, though this won't become visible on the local authority window unless a company builds a station nearby or something happens to change that figure. Once that happens, their opinions of you will update at the end of every game month when the game calls the update town rating function in the town commands file. First, if your rating is 200 points or lower, the town will soften on you and will increase your score by 5 points up to a maximum of 200. This means that while towns will forgive your transgressions over time, this fixed bonus can't ever raise the company's rating above mediocre. After that, the town will assess how each company's nearby stations are performing. Interestingly, it doesn't do this just for stations that happen to be assigned to the town, it's for any stations that happen to be nearby and the searched radius grows as the town does. This means it's possible for one station to affect the attitude of multiple local authorities, both positively or negatively, if the towns are close enough. It's equally possible for a station servicing a remote industry somewhere not to contribute to a local authority's rating either way. For each of the found stations that has had any cargo picked up or delivered to it within the last 50 game days, which is just under 2 minutes of real time, the company that owns it will get a bonus of 12 rating points. However, if a station has not transferred any cargo in that time, it will count against the company instead, reducing the score by 15. So to stay in a town council's good books, it's important to make sure your stations regularly have vehicles arriving there, and to have multiple vehicles on any route where the one-way travel time is over a minute. Having acquired goodwill from the local authority for adequately maintaining your transport links, you can then spend it on ruining their town for the sake of more money for your transport empire. 
Certain construction actions we'll call the change town rating function which will lower your standing and if you don't have a high enough rating then you'll be stopped from doing them. Crucially, if your rating drops to negative 200, therefore putting you into the very poor band, then the local authority won't allow you to build any stations in or around their town, severely limiting your activities there until you clean up your act a bit. One of the ways I most often find myself antagonising a town is by getting stray buildings out the way to alter the landscape or build a station. The dent to your rating for demolishing a building isn't a fixed size and instead each building defines its own rating cost on removal, given in the house specs table in townland.h. In general, the larger a building is, the higher the cost of its removal, both in terms of money and your reputation, and towns will only let you demolish a building if the action would not drop your rating below zero. It's clear that the population of Transport Tycoon take their football and rugby as seriously as most real-life English towns, as the most unforgivable thing a tycoon can do in their world is to remove a stadium. This action costs a huge 300 rating points and can drop you two entire rating bands in the local authority window. The only other building to equal this penalty is the Four Tiles Shopping Centre. After that, there is a sharp drop to the next most costly building, which is this high-rise office building with a value of 250. Close behind this, churches cost 230 points to remove. I would have thought that this is because the population have an attachment to their historic religious buildings, but it turns out that theatres and cinemas have the same 230 point cost, so maybe they just go to church for another form of entertainment. At the other end of the scale, some of the least consequential things to remove in a town are statues and fountains, both of which will only dent your reputation by 40 points. If for some mad reason you're playing in the Toyland climate, their statues are valued slightly more at 70 points, but the toy people show some unexpected xenophobia by considering igloos and teepees mostly disposable at just 45. The award for the least valued building, however, goes to these little houses which appear in the desert climate. If you destroy these, the council will barely care at all, deducting just 30 points from your rating. We already know that a replica of Chris Sawyer's house features in the game, I can only imagine that this one was designed after a neighbour that he particularly disliked. While the range of building removal costs happens to be from 30 to 300 in the base game, new GRF extensions can define their own values for it. As the maximum rating a player can have is 1000, setting the cost above this will make the building for most purposes indestructible. Unfortunately, the rating cost to remove a building is stored as an unsigned value, which means it can never be negative, so it isn't possible to victimise certain buildings by setting their cost below zero and have the council show appreciation for you getting rid of them. The council also takes a dim view of you messing with their infrastructure. Removing a road tile at the end of a route will damage your reputation by 18 points. However, if you remove a road tile that's connected to more than one other road tile next to it, then this penalty will more than double to 50 points. And unless you're playing with the extra dynamite option on in TDD patch, or the allow removal of more town-owned roads, bridges and tunnels setting in open TTD, the local authorities will never allow you to remove inner roads. So if you find yourself needing to restructure a stretch of road built by a town, it's always better to demolish starting from the outside going inwards. There's also an option in the game settings called City Council Attitude Towards Restructuring, which can be set to three levels, Permissive, Neutral or Hostile. Surprisingly, this doesn't actually affect how much your reputation will go down for removing any roads, but it does alter the minimum rating at which you're allowed to do it. When a council is permissive, you'll be allowed to remove a road if your rating is 16 or above. For neutral is 64, and if they're hostile then you'll need a rating of 112. The difference between permissive and hostile only buys you 5 road edge tiles, or not even 2 inner road tiles, so the setting doesn't really make a lot of difference in this department. Also in the vanilla Transport Tycoon Deluxe, you are unable to destroy tunnels and bridges that were owned by a town, which could make things inconvenient as often they don't plan very well. The extra dynamite option allows you to do this, but at quite a heavy cost to your reputation. You'll have to give up 250 points of your rating no matter what the size of the bridge or tunnel was. The restructuring difficulty setting affects how high your reputation needs to be for this action as well, but this time the gaps are much greater. On permissive, you can destroy a tunnel or bridge with just 144 points, on neutral it's 208, and on hostile you'll need 400 points. Even with the limitation of 400 points, demolishing a bridge will put your reputation down into the mediocre category, so you have to be very selective about when you do this. 
The good news is that destroying a bridge or a tunnel can never reduce your rating below zero, even if you had fewer than 250 points to start with. One last point about bridges exclusive to OpenTTD is something that I hadn't even considered before I saw it in the code. You're able to upgrade road bridges in place by clicking on them with the bridge tool. If the bridge belongs to a town, then they will always allow you to upgrade it to a more expensive bridge, but never to downgrade it, completely independent of your current rating. Even if they absolutely resent you, they'll accept an improvement, but only grudgingly as it won't do anything to raise or lower your score. All of these are things to watch out for, but now we're going to talk about the most dangerous threat to your reputation score in the game. Despite their harmless appearance, not to mention their complete immobility, trees can be your greatest enemy when it comes to your rating with a town. The local authorities are keen environmentalists, and will notice when you disturb a tree anywhere in the same hemisphere. Unlike the other actions so far, when you know you're definitely removing parts of the town, it isn't always obvious when you're cutting down trees that a town cares about, because their zone of influence can be surprisingly massive. If a tile anywhere within a local authority's gigantic area of influence has any trees on it, then disturbing it at all, by clearing it, building on it, or altering the slope of the land in a way that uproots it, will cost you 35 reputation points with the local authority. While this sounds minor for one tile, trees grow in large clusters, and when you're building any stations or tracks in a wooded area, the cost will add up very quickly. This can be a problem particularly in the desert and mountain climates, which have areas that are extremely heavily forested. To make matters worse, this is the only reputation damaging action that the game will allow you to keep doing no matter how low your rating gets. Unlike the others, there's no point where a message will come up saying that the local authority refuses to allow you to continue. This means that if you don't keep trees in mind, it's very easy to tank your rating all the way down to appalling by clearing just a couple of dozen tiles. The bright side of trees is that the local authority's affinity for them can work in your favour as well, as they provide the only way to boost the council's opinion of you, outside keeping your stations running and waiting for their tempers to cool off. If the council sees you planting a tree on a clear tile, you'll instantly gain 7 reputation points back, and you can repeat this as often as you want to boost your reputation up to a maximum of 220, putting you at the bottom of the good band. Unfortunately, this only works for tiles that were clear before. Adding more trees to a tile that already has them won't have the same effect. It also means that you're effectively planting bombs which can easily destroy your rating again if you later decide you need to build there. However, even with these drawbacks, trees remain the only above-board way to boost your reputation quickly. I say the only above-board way because if all else fails and you need a rating boost in a hurry, you can resort to bribing the town council. This is an option introduced in TTD Patch and carried over to OpenTTD, and it can be found in the local authority window provided your game options are set up to allow it. By successfully bribing a town, you'll instantly get a boost to your rating of 200 points, putting you up one entire band. Bribes can be repeated as often as you care to try them, up until your rating with the town reaches 800. However, by using this option, you also take the risk of your actions being uncovered by a regional inspector. When you attempt a bribe, there is a 1 in 14 chance that an error message will appear, and instead of getting the bonus, your rating with the town will drop to minus 50 if it's above that point, and put you straight into the poor category. There's also a comment in OpenTDD's code wondering if this should be set even lower, but the note has been there for 14 years now, so at this point we can probably assume we're safe. Worse than the reputation penalty, though, there are two other side effects of having a bribe attempt discovered. It will set all the ratings of your stations in the town to zero, severely affecting how quickly passengers and cargo arrive there. It will also set the unwanted flag on your company for the next six months of gameplay. This means, for that time, you will be disallowed from using any of the local authority actions for this town, locking you out from buying advertising campaigns or other useful town actions. There's one more special action that can be dictated by the local authority, and that's the construction of airports. They're subject to the same rule as other stations, where a council won't let you build them if your rating drops below 200 points, but they also have additional restrictions unique to them that don't have to do with your rating. In the original code, each town would keep track of how many airports were currently assigned to it, and it would never allow more than two of them to exist, no matter what company they belonged to. Any attempt to build further airports would result in flat-out refusal. OpenTTD keeps this behaviour by default, but also provides the option to use a more nuanced calculation. 
If the setting Allow Town Controlled Noise Level for Airports is activated, you'll be able to see a couple more details in the Town and Airport Construction windows, the noise that each airport will generate, and the current noise level and limit in the towns. The larger an airport is, the greater the level of noise produced. The tiny heliport produces one noise unit, and the city airport has five. Once you get above the large airports, the number increases in huge leaps up to Intercontinental, whose 25 noise units probably means you're never going to get to build it in this mode ever. For their part, towns decide their noise level tolerance based on their population, and this is also affected by the council attitude to restructuring setting that affects roads and bridges. Every town starts off with a baseline of three noise units, and will then gain one unit of tolerance for every 800 people if the council is permissive, 2000 if it's neutral, and an enormous 4000 if it's hostile. When the player attempts to build an airport, it will check for its nearest town using a different algorithm from most other stations. Unlike the issue with large railway stations I mentioned in the station names video, it will account for all of the tiles on the perimeter of the airport, and not just the northernmost one. The first town it hits, by gradually searching outwards from these tiles, will be chosen to suffer the effects of airport noise. The potential airport's noise effect on the town will now be calculated depending on the distance from the town centre tile to the nearest airport tile. To get the noise reduction value, the town council restructuring attitude comes into play again, as the distance will now be divided by a number dependent on that setting. For permissive it's 8, neutral has 12 and hostile has 16. The result of this division is rounded down, then the noise level effect on the town is calculated as the airport's base noise level minus the noise reduction value. If the result is below 1, then it will force it to be 1 instead, so all airports will produce at least some noise. So the final noise effect on the town is added to the town's current noise level from other airports assigned to it. If it's at the town's tolerance or less, then the airport can be built. If not, then you'll get a message about the local authority's noise concerns and will have to find another place. If you're into this sort of thing, I believe that this is the complete formula for deciding whether an airport is permitted. There are a couple of oddities with this calculation which provide good news and bad news. The bad news is that there is no upper limit to the distance searched for the nearest town while building an airport. Even when you're building one in the middle of nowhere, there will always be a closest town to complain about you. The good news is that only that town will be affected by the noise level. Even if an airport is roughly equidistant from several towns around it, only one of them will have any points counted towards their noise limit. If two towns are of equal distance away, the game uses the one that happens to have the lowest internal ID instead. Nevertheless, on the hostile setting, this makes it incredibly difficult to build any airports above the small size. I did some spreadsheeting and worked out that the town population required to build a city airport 12 tiles away from a hostile city centre was 8,000. For reference, I currently have just under 5,000 people in my largest city in a save that's been going for 50 game years, but it's very possible that there are some advanced techniques for increasing population more efficiently that I'll discover later. For the intercontinental airports, though, even the permissive setting requires a population of 17,000, and on hostile I think it's more than the population of my entire landscape. So those are all the ways that you can butter a council up or downwards with your actions, and the consequences for doing so. I think my main points to take away from this are that bribes are much more expensive than they're worth for the trouble they can cause, make sure that the gap between vehicles arriving at your stations doesn't approach two minutes, and also that you should be nicer to trees in general. If you're interested in anything else I might be able to dig into, please feel free to leave a comment. Topics I already know I want to explore include how company and station ratings are calculated, how towns are named, and the behaviour of the vehicle manufacturers that pop up onto the screen every so often and ruin my footage. Thank you to everyone on the left here for supporting me creating Stumbling Tours videos. If you'd like to join in or make suggestions for other games to cover, please have a look at David X Newton on Patreon.